What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, I receive in this channel Dexter Henry from New York Sports, Post Sports, and SNI TV people. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, man. Victor, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here with Nick's Fans Brazil. Uh, this is my first, I think, international show appearance. So, Whoa. yeah, so it's the <laughs> first time. Yeah, and it's, it's, I'm really excited because I like seeing when there's sports fans in other places, Victor. So knowing there's a lot of Knicks fans in Brazil, that's great, man. I, I, I grew up a Knicks fan, so th that's, that's great. I'm, I'm glad to see that. Yeah. Man, it's a, a great, great honor to nah, receive you in this channel, bro. Great, great thank, honor. Thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Glad to be, <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> oh, first of all, uh, do you can uh, introduce nah, yourself uh, for Brazilians? Yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, as Victor said, I work for the New York Post and uh, Sportsnet New York SNY. Uh, which is New York Post is a newspaper in New York City um, and covers things nationally as well too. And SNY is a um, local regional cha channel in New York City. And so we cover a lot of stuff with New York sports, but I work on the digital side. So I make a lot of videos like Victor. Um, where I'm interviewing <laughs> a lot of different people. We, we talk Knicks, Mets, Nets, Rangers, everything. But we do a lot of Knicks and we do some great coverage on the, on the Knicks. Um, I've been working in journalism for, let me think about this now, I'm going to probably make myself feel old, but I've been <laughs> working in journalism professionally for 17 years in sports broadcast wow. journalism. So I'm working for a long time. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, from New York City. I said before, I grew up a Knicks fan, uh, diehard Knicks fan in the early 90s, Patrick Ewing, John Starks. Those are my guys. Uh, I was a big John Starks fan. <laughs> um, There you go. And and look, I got the book right behind me. Chris, Chris, Chris Herring, uh, uh, good friend of mine. I love Chris Harry. Love Chris. <laughs> Chris did a great job on that book. And then Spike Lee is going to make a little film on that, which is exciting too. Um, but I grew up in that era, Victor, and to the listeners and viewers out there, grew up a big Knicks fan. Um, basketball is my first sports love. Love the Knicks. Watch it before I even had TV to watch the next Victor. I was listening on the radio with my dad. Whoa, um, yeah, we were listening on the radio. We didn't have cable, so I couldn't see all the Knicks games when I was really young. So I was listening on the radio, um, listening to Walt and, and Mike Breen when they were on the radio. So, um, that, yeah, it shows my age a little bit there, but yeah, man, I, I always loved the Knicks, I always loved sports journalism. Um, I was fortunate to study it in college at the University of Pittsburgh and then go through it in my career but um i love sports journalism i love creating videos i love talking sports i love being on shows like nick's fans brazil so that's a little bit about me sports lover basketball junkie you name it that's me <laughs> ah great man yeah. great great uh i am curious i am curious man uh how start uh your passion with uh, mm. basketball for example ah what i always tell people is And that's a great question, Victor. Um, I remember basketball is the first sport I played that I really, really liked playing, um, uh, you know, more than other sports. I would say soccer is number two. I'm a big football. I'm a big soccer football fan. Um, I think the passion was there from playing it. I always just like playing it. And then I remember it was in the 1990 season watching the Knicks. I was 1990 or 1991. I might be getting this wrong. I think it was 1990. The Knicks were playing the Pistons in the first round and it was the playoffs. And I just saw the energy at the garden and how they played Xavier McDaniel with the chest bumping with Patrick Ewing. And I was just like, wow, who's this team? They are representing New York. They play tough and <laughs> physical. And I think that was it. I was hooked then that I was just hooked on that team, man. I mean, anything I could read about the Knicks went to the library, looked up stuff on their history. This is before Google guys. And so um, <laughs> that was really it, man. And in the early 90s, I was just hooked, like loved watching the games. I loved how that team played. I think they captured a lot of spirit and passion of New York. Um, and obviously not in New York, other places. I think people who loved the Knicks of that time, they loved how that team played, how hard they played. And I think that's that was it for me. And so the Knicks are really instrumental. My love 
for the team in, in those years and following and reading. And then even when I was in middle school, I was writing for the school newspaper and I was writing about the Knicks and I was making predictions that the Knicks were going to win the championship. And then Bulls, because we had Bulls fans in New York, there were Bulls fans. My who, wife, bro, oh, my no. wife is a Bull fan. Oh, no, man. I, I understand. It's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. Job, very com very oh. complicated. My daughter, my yes. daughter, it's a Nick fan. Good. <laughs> you, well, you did, you did right. My daughter's a Knicks fan too. Um, so we, we, we've done, we've done, <laughs> we've done good in terms of raising the kids. But um, yeah, there were a lot of Bulls fans in high, in, in um, middle school, and even when I was in high school. And so a lot of them would antagonize me and reading the articles. But I always liked. That kind of got me into journalism. I always liked, you know, writing things and made people think and having the sports discussions with them. So, yeah, man, it was it was from the start and early on. And I just I just had a passion for the Knicks, and that evolved into other sports too. I love sports in general and telling the stories around it. But yeah, it kind of really started with the Knicks. The Knicks are the Knicks are instrumental in the fact that I even am able to be a sports broadcaster and journalist in in my position. They definitely had a huge role in that for sure. Uh, I am I I work, bro, uh, with advertising, advertising and uh, journalism. Uh, close, yeah, we, close. yeah, goes together, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a, a great, uh, uh, I you told me that about about you. Uh, be so 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 cool, man. So cool. Thank you. Um, man. Um, and uh, I want to talk with you about New York Knicks. Of New course, York of Knicks. course. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about uh, about New York Knicks. Uh, first of all, uh, I want uh, your opinion. Uh, what's your expectations uh, with uh, Jalen Brunson, uh, for ah. example, in the Knicks? Yeah. So I'll say this, Victor. I was, you know, at the beginning when the offseason started, you know, June 30th, I was... Um, uh, I don't know if they should get Brunson. I don't know what the cost will be. Is it worth it? Um, clearing the cap. I was a little unsure about what they did at the draft, clearing the cap space and, and, and that stuff, getting rid of the picks. But they got future picks, which yes. might help them later. I'm sure we'll get to that later, right? It might help them later. But I grew, the signing grew on me. They, I don't think they overpaid for Brunson. I think they compensate him fairly. If you look at where he is, he's paid somewhere between like the 15th and 17th highest point guard in the league you know and yes. i think he's probably maybe a little bit better than that so when you look at it the money's really not that bad that you're paying from the knicks haven't had a point guard in so long like a good competent point guard that could break down the defense and set <laughs> other people up probably since raymond felton in that gr very good 2012 2013 season right we haven't seen yes. one since then so this is good i think he's going to help the offense i think he's going to help the guys I expect him to play well. The one thing I like about him, and I always liked about him, is he competes for his size. He's very tough. And we saw last year in the playoffs for Dallas playing next yes. to Luka. He's tough. He can hit big shots. I don't think he's scared of the big moment. I think he's ready to play in New York. And look, he wanted to come here. It's nice for Knicks fans to see somebody <laughs> who wanted to be here. And I think yes. Knicks fans should embrace that and should Good be somewhat point. excited about it. I don't think he has to be a superstar, Victor. I just think if he plays with it himself and the way he's playing in Thibodeau's system, playing defense, setting guys up, toughness, grittiness, I think he'll be fine, man. I think I, I, I expect a good season from him. I do. Man, I saw Alfred Payton. <laughs> Alfred Payton, point guard from the Knicks, man. I Alfred Payton. Uh, Alec Burks, I like he. No, Alec Burks, but yep. Alec Burks, PG man, man, it's complicated. It's complicated. He, I like was, Alec Burks, but not PG, not right. PG. Yeah, he's not a point guard. <laughs> we, we, I don't think, I don't think Nick fans wanted to see much more of that. You know, Alec Burks came in. Obviously, there were struggles last year with Kevin Walker, his health, not being able to defend. The backcourt defense was terrible with him and Evan Fournier. Uh, Alec yeah. Burks, look, Alec Burks was a, was a very good player. I, I, yes. So I'm with you. But he wasn't a point guard. You were asking him to do things that he really is. He's not a PG, as you said, Victor. Yes. So this this is a, a huge upgrade to the position. And the Knicks didn't really have to give up anything to upgrade his position. So 
it's a, it's a win to me for the Knicks. You know, I think a lot comes with what do they do next with the team? Um, is it going to be the young guys developing? Are they going to really go for Donovan Mitchell? Those are all the questions that are coming next for the Knicks that are interesting to see. I, I will ask uh, to you mm -hmm. later about Spider. Okay, we'll get, to, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Jalen Brown, so I agree with you. Jalen Brunson, I like so much your energy. Energy. Energy from Jalen Brunson. It's, it's uh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. And uh, Jalen Brunson is more solid nah, uh, with PG. And the Knicks are a long time. Nah, don't have uh, a solid. Long time. Yes. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw in New York Post uh, a post né, from Zach Brasiler. Yeah, good uh, friend of mine. Yeah, Zach, who did a great job covering the Knicks with Mark Berman out. Yes. Mm -hmm. I make it. I make it. Uh, interview with Zach Brasiler and uh, uh, Mark Berman from yep. New York Post. There too. you go. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I saw uh, uh, the post. Derek Harper, né, promise. Uh, the Nick fans will uh, will love né? Uh, Jalen Brunson. Derek Harper, it's a great PG né? in the past. And, a great, uh, a, great a great point guard. Also played for Dallas, as you know, Victor. Yes. Very instrumental yes. in that 1994 run uh, to the finals. And I, I, I tr listen, I, t I trust someone like Derek Harper when he says that. And I, I, I talked to Zach about it. Because I know we talked to Derek, Derek Harper for that story. Um, and he's, you know, Zach in, in a conversation I had thought it was a really good signing at the time for the Knicks. And and he believes a lot in what uh, Derek Harper says he could bring. And I think Derek Harper's right. I think, he, as you said, the word is solid. Victor, that's a great word for it. It's solid. We're not asking, I don't think the Knicks nation is asking for flashiness. I don't think yes. they're asking for uh, the superstar point guard. You're just asking for solid and consistent. And I do think Jalen Brunson can be that guy. Can he get you just, between yeah. 16 and 18 points a game? I think his assist rate can actually go up here in New York because I think he's playing with some more versatile players. I'm a little worried about the Knicks shooting. We'll get to that later. But I think his assist rate can go up. I think he can help players like Julius Randle because now you're taking the ball out of his hands. I know a lot of Nick fans, they want the ball out of his hands. <laughs> I know that. But you're, you're, getting, you're getting the ball out of his hands. And with Julius, Julius had a fantastic season two seasons ago. But yes. I, I don't think he's that guy that you want the ball in his hands as much. I think he can play well off the ball better. And with someone like Brunson, it's going to help him. I think it's definitely going to help RJ as well too, RJ Barrett. I definitely think it will help him. So I agree with Derek Harper. I think there's reasons to be excited. And a lot of it is because of what you said, Victor solid and being consistent. And I think Jalen Brunson can bring that. I also think he's got the toughness that this team needs at that PG position. I think he brings some of that toughness. And I think that's a lot of what Derek Harper likes. And I think a lot of people look, Jalen Brunson's respected around the league. Ask anybody who covers the NBA, talk to guys at NBA. Most people I've talked to say, Hey, that was a solid signing. Maybe I would have liked to give him a couple million dollars less, but this, that's the price for a point guard. He got a little bit more than Fred Van Vliet got a couple of years ago. This is the going price, and I, I don't think the Knicks overpaid. I think they actually got him at the right price, and it's a good signing. Like I said, it's a good one. Uh, and uh, I understand, uh, Dexter, Nick fans uh, are desesperated uh, about stars, superstars, right? Uh, Nick, uh, the Knicks not a uh, contender a long years too nah? but uh, you 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 talk a uh, good point uh, Jalen Brunson not a superstar but it's a solid uh, point guard N Knicks needs uh, this Knicks needs so much uh, a point guard uh, solid nah, in this team Uh, but I understand. Nah. Uh, I will talk about Spider. Spider is the <laughs> <laughs> star. I'll talk about Spider, right? <laughs> uh, I, I, I will talk first uh, with you about the new player to Isaiah Hartenstein before yep. Spider. Uh, in your, uh, what do you think about Isaiah Hartenstein? So 
I this this I think actually, and this is where I think if you like the Knicks offseason, you can love Jalen Brunson, right? You can love that signing. But what I actually liked with the Isaiah Hardenstein signing is that he's a nice big. Noel is gone now, right? Mitchell Robinson's going to be the starting center. But what Isaiah Hardenstein gives you, who's actually not bad defensively, he's very good in the pick and pop. He can hit the outside yeah. shot and stretch the floor a little bit. So he gives you a bit of a different look when Mitchell Robinson is not on the floor. So I really like that. Um, and I think he's not a slouch on defense. I'm intrigued to see how he is in Tibbs' system. Um, so he's a, I think that was a really solid signing to get him as a backup center that gives you some offensive versatility at that five position. I think there's a lot of situations where, you know, when the Knicks get this second unit, assuming the team roster is looks like what it does right now, <laughs> assuming that happens, you know, if Derrick Rose is playing and there's some pick and roll, pick and pop situations with Hardenstein, I think that's going to work. He's going to help stretch the floor with that second unit. I think there's some times you'll even see him with some of the guys in the first unit. Uh, playing off of them where I think it's good. But I like that signing because the Knicks need – I thought they needed more shooting, and he's a guy that helps stretch the floor and give them some offensive ver- versatility. There's not a lot of guys you trust uh, from long range, 18 feet and out. He's not a three-point shooter, but Hardenstein can hit you to 15 to 20-footer. Uh, 15 to 18 is probably his really strong his strong range there. But I really like him. He's a solid defender, especially in the interior it was a really good, I think that's a really good value signing for the Knicks and identifying an area of need they had. Look, personally, I would have been fine if they said, hey, let's go with Jericho Sims as a backup because I'm very high on Jericho Sims. I like how he plays. I think he's really good. Um, and he, and they, the Knicks, that should be also mentioned too. They signed Jericho Sims to a multi-year deal and they got yes. him at a very good value. And now he's in the system. Should Hartenstein go down? Should Mitchell Robinson go down. Nick fans know that they've seen Robinson have a lot of injuries. Should that happen, now the Knicks have some depth at the center position, and they got a little younger because Taj Gibson, while we love the vet Taj Gibson from Brooklyn, Fort Greene, shout out to Taj Gibson, he is a little older. Now you get a little bit, little bit younger at yes. that position, and I think it was a good thing. So Hartenstein signing, great value signing, one of the underrated signings of the offseason in the NBA, in my opinion. So, yeah. No, I, I agree with you, and uh, I, I, I also too uh, your opinion. Um, first of all, I don't like, I, I don't like. But so many people, so many people, Dexter, talk with me about Isaiah, and uh, I change <laughs> my opinion. I you change your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. many people uh, talking. So, uh, so many. Uh, so many things good about Isaiah. I, I changed my opinion. I changed my opinion. Yeah, I, and, I think uh, I think Victor. Once you see him play, like I, I and I watched a good amount of the Clippers last year. I, it's funny. I think it's a loss for the Clippers. The Clippers really still could have yes. used them. Um, yes. Obviously, had a lot of depth, and they had a lot of guys that else they were trying to bring back. But Ty, Ty, Tyron Lou also spoke to Zach Braziller, my colleague, and he he talked about how much he thought Isaiah was a good piece. Um, and that he yes. fit really well in with the Knicks. So I, he's a good role player. And, you know, again, I'm going to use your word again, Victor. Solid. Solid role player. <laughs> solid backup five. When you're when you're a front office and you're making solid moves, they add up. Good organizations in basketball, any sport, you consistently make solid moves. You start to build a good culture. And that's what I hope the Knicks are doing. I think what Knicks fans hope they're doing. But yes. I think when you make signings like this, these are smart. This isn't. This isn't the Knicks front office of the old. This isn't signing the players that are old and over the hill and, you know, you don't know what they can give anymore. They, they've made some competent moves. Have they gotten the superstar? No. Do they need to do that right now? In my opinion, no, maybe. But what they really need is yes. getting a good culture of guys together that can work. And I, I hope, hopefully for Knicks fans, they're building towards that. No, I, I totally, totally agree with you. And uh, I, I am curious about uh, Zaya. Uh, I, I imagine uh, this guy, uh, pick and rolls, drives, now making drives for Jalen Brunson, um, RJ Barrett, mm-hmm. Julius Randle, uh, create space, nah, yep. uh, infiltrations. Uh, I I imagine uh, Isaiah Hartenstein will be 
more interesting in these cases, né? Because Azaya is different. Your style, style, uh, your skills uh, compared with uh, Mitchell Robinson, for example, yep. né? Uh, I, I am curious, man. So, so curious about this player, né? Playing <laughs> with right. Jalen Brunson and, uh, and, other, and other guys. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how it all works out. But I think, I think, like you said, I think you can at least see from, I'm sure you're talking to people too, Victor, is that, like I said, the style that he'll bring, it gives him another dimension. You know, Nerlens Noel yeah. and Mitchell Robinson, while they both the were same. very good, they're kind the of similar, right? Yeah, kind similar. of redundant. You're bringing in that same center off the branch. You're giving that good rim runner. They're good. They can protect the rim. The thing about Hardenstein that, People might not realize he's he's pretty decent at protecting the rim too. I, I don't he's not as athletic as those other two guys, but he's a yes. decent rim protector. And sh- I, I look I don't know the exact stat, but shots around him at the rim with him there were pretty low, and, and the Clippers are going to miss that. And so the Knicks, you know, it's Thibodeau is not going to bring in a center that can't defend the rim. That's not what he likes. He likes a guy who can knows how to defend the rim. But having a guy who can hit an outside shot. And he's also, this is something else I didn't mention, Victor. He's a very good passer. Very good passer. And I like I like bigs that if you put him in the high post or even in the low post, that can find a guy that can look, that can pass. I like that. And so when you can have more players that know how to pass and different movement, that's going to help the offense. So I see Hartenstein as a plus. I think you should get more excited, Victor, more excited about Hartenstein. It, it's going to be good. Me too, me too. Now, <laughs> too, but first of all, no. <laughs> and, uh, oh, uh, Dexter, uh, we talked uh, about Asaya, né? Hartenstein, and uh, Jalen Brunson. Uh, now, I want to talk with you about the biggest, uh, the biggest <laughs> rumor, <laughs> the biggest rumor this offseason. Né, from the Knicks, né? Uh, what's your opinion né, about uh, this case, Donovan Mitchell? Donovan yeah. Mitchell, Spider-Man Four coming <laughs> soon or not? In your opinion, what do you think about this case? So Donovan Mitchell, I think, is an extremely talented player. If you ask me this. Five weeks ago, if we had talked about five weeks ago, Victor, I would have said, I, I don't, I don't think the Knicks should go and get him. Because, and the reason I felt that way, I, I'm I'm on the fence now, but at first I said no. The reason my mm-hmm. concerns, and I still have this concern, my concern is that the Knicks, if they have Mitchell and Brunson both in the backcourt, you have two very small guards. And yeah. I don't really like having two small guards. Now, Mitchell is dynamic. He can score the ball extremely well. Um, he's an all-star. He would be an all-star in the Knicks. He would clearly be the number one option. That that said, I understand why you would want to go do that. If you're not, if Mitchell can get better defensively, still a little concerned about the size. We've seen how small guards didn't work out well in Portland with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. And I don't. I wouldn't want to see the Knicks become the East Coast version of them. But here's my thing: if you're going to go get Donovan Mitchell, if you're the Knicks, you're going to do it. I think what it comes down to for me is who are the young players that you're giving up, okay? Mm-hmm. And how many picks is it going to take? Now we yes. know Danny Ainge is going to want the picks, and he's going to try to win the trade, and he's going to try to fleece the Knicks. We yes. a lot of the reporting I stuff I've heard and people I've talked to is he wants six picks and the Knicks are saying no, we're not going to do that. I think reasonably if they could get somewhere to four picks, and it's spread out and the Knicks have a lot of picks, and which young players they give up. So if it's for me, if it was me making the deal, if you can keep Quentin Grimes. I'd, I'll give up the rest of the young players. Reddish, Obi, although I really like Obi, and I know Knicks fans love Obi, and so uh-huh. do I. But if Randall's going to be here, then I don't really see the pathway to him getting more playing time right now. Yes. So I'd be fine with doing that. 
If you want to say, and another guy, like, I love Quickly. It's my daughter's favorite player. I love, I love Quickly. But if you tell me you can get Donovan Mitchell, I understand it. If the trade came down to four picks and you had to give up a combination of those guys or maybe Derrick Rose and Fournier, okay, fine. But if you ask me my honest opinion, what I really think the Knicks should do is I think they should just stay the course, develop the young guys, wait till it's another free agent you can add or a more, I think if the Knicks are going to go for it, you go for that really top A-list superstar. Donovan Mitchell is a very good player. He's probably somewhere between the 20th and 25th best player in the league, somewhere around there. I'd probably put him very good player, consistent all-star. Is he that guy that's going to take you to the promised land? Get, I'm not sure. As a number one option, I'm not so sure about that. And I really like Donovan Mitchell. I'm not yes. sure. He, I would need to see his playmaking get better. I would need to see his defense get better. There are very few guys like that in the league. I just also want to be clear for the fans listening. You know, you're talking about Kevin Durant, Nikola Jokic, uh, mm-hmm. Giannis, Luka Doncic. There's very few guys, I think, that you put them on a team and they'll take you to a, another height. I don't think Donovan Mitchell's quite there. If the Knicks had another guy, maybe I would feel much differently about going to get him. My other thing I will add, too, is if I was the Knicks, I'm absolutely positively not giving up R.J. Barrett. You cannot give up R.J. Barrett here. If you're going to bring in Donovan Mitchell, you need to keep R.J. Barrett. I would not give him up. I like R.J. Barrett's progression. I think he's been growing nicely. I think he's been fine. There you go. See the Funko there. There you go. <laughs> Number nine. I think he's been growing nicely, Victor, and I think the Knicks should stay the course. I, I just, the way this has all played out so far, all the rumors, we're now in the middle of August. The trade hasn't happened yet. Nothing's happened yet. Mm-hmm. I think something's going to happen soon before we get to training camp in six weeks or five weeks or whatever. Uh. Me too. Because I don't think you want this to hang over the team and the young players. So if you're going to make the move and you're the Knicks, I'm going to make it now. But if you really ask me, I think they should just stick the course and keep building with this young team and build the core and the depth and don't worry about trying to get a star. Just, just keep building because I actually think the Knicks – I don't think the Knicks are in a bad situation. Now, I think if they could get off Fournier's contract or maybe get off of – Randall's contract some way down the future, fine. Yes. But I don't think those situations as bad as some people make it out to be. I understand if you get Mitchell, look, you could have a lineup of Brunson, Mitchell, Barrett, Randall, and M- Mitchell Robinson. That's not a bad starting five, right? Yes. And depending on who you give up, if you can keep Quentin Grimes, and have, who I'm very high on, and he could start over Fournier this year, so don't be shocked at that. I, you could have a nice bench and have some things going. So I don't know. I just think the Knicks need to keep building. There's a lot. You talked about it too, Victor. There's a lot always about Knicks fans wanting the superstar, wanting the superstar. Just build the culture. Be a good team. Be a consistent playoff team. And I think the other things will come. Just, just you know, build the culture, continue to develop. So I'm on the fence. If they get, if they get Mitchell, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. But I think a lot of it has to do with what they give up in picks and who are the young players that they give up to get him? A lot will depend on that. No, I, I agree with you, uh, but I, I understand the Nick fans. Now, Nick fans, uh, yeah. I, I, I talked it uh, uh, before, uh, so desperate about yep. uh, a player, star, all star, you know? and uh, Donovan Mitchell can be uh, begin uh, other. Uh, all stars, uh, look, uh, look for the Knicks with uh, another ice, nah, uh, with this team because uh, Knicks and uh, needs uh, to uh, will be more attract- attractive, nah, yeah, for uh, others, all stars. And uh, Donovan Mitchell can be the first uh, player, uh. Nah, can be uh, the change uh, this vision about and I, this I think that's the other that's the other side of it Victor I think you're right about that and I agree with you that the other way of looking at it is that if you get a guy like him here and let's say 
let's say the Knicks in the next year or two, you get Mitchell in here. You, maybe you keep a player like Grimes around and their second round playoff team. And in uh -huh. 2023, when they'll have some cap space again, uh, they'll be off the books, you know, Fournier's contract, even Randall's contract. They'll be, they'll have some flexibility again. Now you could maybe say, okay, well, maybe they can attract another star in here. So that is a way of looking at it. You get the star in now that you think fits your culture. You try to build, get to the playoffs. Maybe you get to the second. Maybe it get, maybe it's better than that. Um, and then yes. maybe you're able to get another guy. That's a, that is a way of looking at it. So there's so many ways to build the team. If you think Mitchell's that guy and that and that good, identify your price. Know what you'll get. You'll give up for him. And if you think he can help you attract other stars, I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. Look, the Knicks could yeah. do worse than getting Donovan Mitchell at 25, who's under contract for another three years, I believe, which is, you know, great. But it's going to cost them. It's just about what it's going to cost them. And that's the thing. The price. The, the price. price. What is the Dexter. price? The yes. Pri <laughs> <laughs> what is the price, Victor? Is the question, uh, yep. uh, the price. Uh, I, I believe yet uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, can be uh, a Nick. But when and the price. Uh, yep. I, 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 I like so much uh, Kenton Grimes, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Kikley, and uh, another uh, players, yo younger, uh, yep. younger players from the Knicks. I, I, I like so much. But uh, it's complicated in this situation. Uh, mm -hmm. the, is the opportunity opportunity uh, because uh, Donovan Mitchell is from New York? Yep. Uh, man, in Brazil, in Brazil, uh, it's complicated uh, because uh, Knicks don't uh, have a, don't have a contender along years. Okay, mm -hmm. so this new generation like more golden state warriors ah. and uh and other teams not new york Knicks. not the Knicks. I am, yeah, I am you, Knicks well fan. you well you know you know like me victor in the 90s the knicks were a very popular yes. team there's, and, and yes. there's still there's knicks fans everywhere the knicks are one of the one of the original teams there's knicks fans everywhere but you're right the younger generation is even that same way in new york the younger generation they follow a lot more of the players, so they love Curry and what he's done in Golden State. That's amazing. KD, wherever he's been in Brooklyn now. Um, you, you don't see that that fever for the Knicks, which is to our point, I think, that you and I are saying. Yes. That, that has to be created. I was at – I got tickets to the Knicks, the game they lost when they lost to Atlanta and they got knocked out in the first round two seasons mm -hmm. ago. And when I watched on TV and then when I was in the building at MSG – the energy was crazy, Victor. It was crazy. So many Knicks fans were just passionate, and they were so excited about being back in the playoffs. Yes. And, and you see that. And this, the Knicks, whether it's in New York or it's in Brazil or it's wherever, the Knicks fans are so hungry and passionate for a winner again and just to be relevant and contending and play. I just want to see them play meaningful games. Right again. Yes. <laughs> like you, remember, you remember you remember how good it was when the Knicks were going up against Mike and they're going up against Reggie and they're going up against the Heat in the playoffs. Those were they're fun. I would yes. I, people could tell me all the time, oh, the Knicks never won a championship in your lifetime. That's fine. But those days, those were fun. That's why I became a, a sports journalist. I, I loved it. It was I, I loved the Sunday afternoon games, NBA on NBC, and <laughs> you couldn't wait to see the Knicks play the Bulls. It was amazing. Like I want I want to hope younger people like my daughter, your daughter, they can see <laughs> yes. and experience that too, because it was it was pretty cool. And and so, you know, if you with Donovan Mitchell, if, I, if I'm being honest, with all the rumors that are out there, we know the teams have been talking. I think it's going to happen. It's just a, as I said, we said before, it's a matter of when and what's the price. But I yes. do think it'll happen. I think Donovan Mitchell wants to be here. Um, I've heard a lot of that behind the scenes, just like I heard with Brunson. He wants to be in New York. I yes. think he, he's been, he's spent a lot of time in New York this summer. He's been showing up at New York Mets games. He's been here a lot. He's been wearing blue and orange. Nick fans want to see him in some different blue and orange, like, like the one Victor's wearing. <laughs> and, <Yes. laughs> um, yeah. And so I, I do think it's going to happen. I just think it's a matter of when and what's the price. And I think the Knicks are 
The, the Knicks have an advantage, though, and this is mm -hmm. one of the rare times in their history they've had this. They've got better assets than anybody else out there to make a trade for a star because they have so many picks and whatever star comes is not going to come to a bad team, but a team that actually is like, oh, it's a playoff team at a minimum. So they're an attractive situation. You're going to hear Miami's name out there. Uh, you're going to hear that. I don't think that's going to happen. Miami doesn't have the picks the Knicks have. And I also don't think Knicks they have the young them. players that the Knicks have. Yes. You can offer them Tyler Hero, but what else does Utah want beside that? Um, so I don't think so. The Knicks have a numerous young players that are cheap, cost-controlled, and they have a plethora of picks. Knicks, you have 11 picks over the next seven years. So – They've got a lot. And even if the Knicks give up four picks, it doesn't totally mortgage their future. So it's 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 really interesting. The Knicks are in the driver's seat. And so in one way, they have a bit of leverage. In the other hand, on the other hand, if Danny Ainge knows that Donovan Mitchell wants to go there and everybody knows that Donovan Mitchell wants to come to New <laughs> yes. York, then it's like, yes. who really has the leverage, right? Because that team knows he wants to go there. So it's going to really be about can they meet in the middle? And I think it's really going to be about the picks more than the players. Ainge is going to want a lot of picks. I've heard the Knicks are not willing to go as high as six picks. They're not willing to do that. I think that four to five range, really four is ideally more of what they think. Um, but we'll see. You know, Rudy, he got five picks for Rudy Gobert, four in a first rounder from this year. So I, I, I don't know. Now, I don't think that means that Donovan Mitchell should cost – uh, five picks, mm -hmm. but we'll see. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, in my opinion, né, uh, existe né, the fight. Danny Ainge, smart guy. Leon mm -hmm. Rose, smart guy. Yep. And uh, it's the fight. Né? It's going to be a fight. Who wins? Who wins the fight? Yeah. Né? And, we'll see. Uh, but man, I, I I think very important uh, the situation with the spider. I talk it né? in Brazil. Uh, don't talk so much about the Knicks. Né? Talk more Golden State Warriors and another teams. Man, this rumor uh, with spider in Brazil. So many channels, so many channels uh, in Brazil talking about the New York Knicks because uh this rumor né, with uh donovan mitchell so uh i think uh donovan mitchell can be so important uh from the knicks uh, uh, around the, the the world and in you you usa because uh the advertising the and uh, the marketing uh involving uh spider is very strong man it's very strong yeah. are, are you joking with the Marvel, <laughs> Spider-Man War. Oh, Spider-Man, right. <laughs> yeah, I can see but, that. That's good marketing there. I see that, yeah. <laughs> but, but, man... I, 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 I agree. Still... I agree, Victor. And I think... Um, I think that to the point that you're making, he would take the profile of the team to another level. Yes, and yes, I, yes. And I agree with you. Not just, obviously, in the States, but also elsewhere. For Knicks fans, I think for Knicks fans all around the world, I think they will say, okay, we have our guy, our star. It's another guy who wanted to be here. There's something about that. You know, I think fans of any team, no matter what sport you like, when your guys or the ladies, they want to be there, it matters. And, you know, I think if it, it, it does give a little high profile to the Knicks. They have a star. We saw this before. You know, it's like when Melo came to the Knicks. Um it gave them that kind of boost and marketability and yes. um, recognition again. Now they didn't have the sustained winning, which is what Knicks fans want to see, but it did, <laughs> it did boost the profile of the team. And I think, I think you're right about that, but I also just feel like even when you do that, you still have to win. Winning is what really is going to boost the profile. You know, if you have great moments in the playoffs and you win games, people will remember that across the league and, that, and that'll boost it. We talk about the Golden State Warriors with Steph and Steph's been amazing. One of my favorite players to watch, but he's won too. It's a four-time champion now. And, and, and that's the stuff that matters. If you win the markability and all that other stuff will come. Mm -hmm. So 
Hopefully the Knicks can win. Knicks fans have been waiting a long time for a winner. A long time. Uh, long time, long, long time, time, man. I love so much this team, man. I love so much. I can see it, man. I see it. I see it. Dexter, in, in your opinion, uh, what's your uh, expectations uh, with this team, né? Mm -hmm. with the Knicks? Uh, in, in two cases, first, uh, uh, without uh, Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell don't come in to the Knicks, okay? This team with Jalen Brunson and another players, okay? The first. The second, uh, what's your expectation this team with uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, can be a Nick? What's your expectation with the Knicks in, the, in two cases? So, the first to the first part the first one if they don't get donovan mitchell my expectation would be i think they could be anywhere from this is probably higher than some other people say but i think they can get anywhere from six to the eighth seed with that team but they could be dangerous if they're playing good at the end of the season um i think the team will be better defensively than they were last year I actually think they'll be a lot better offensively than they were last year because they have a competent point guard. Yes. Um, a lot of how the Knicks do and how good they can be depends on two things. How good the point guard play is, which I actually expect to be solid, but what kind of player is Julius Randle? Does he... I do not think we will ever see Julius Randle look like he did Uh, during the 2020-2021 season. I don't think so. But I think he's some... I don't think he's also as bad as we saw him last year. I think he's somewhere in between that. And if he's somewhere <laughs> in between that, with not... I think he'll be fine. Right? As a second, third option, I think he's fine. That's the role that he's better suited for. Now, if yes. he's doing that, R.J. Barrett makes another leap in his game which I actually am, out of the three things I said, I'm actually probably the most confident about that because I like the way RJ's been trending. Um, if that happens, I can see the Knicks winning. I can see them winning 43 to 46 games if everything shakes out right. The East is tough. It's not going mm -hmm. to be easy. But does that get them in the lower part of the playoffs, six to eight seed? Um, can they avoid the playing tournament? That might be tough. I probably see them more seven, eight, but I think for this group, if you can get in and you get into the playoffs and you're playing meaningful games again, that matters. because that'll be two out of three years. That's just something for you to build on. And I think that's good. So I can see them 43, 45 wins, just over 500. I can see this team. And I think that's a good bounce back for them. Now, if they get down to the Mitchell and I really think it depends on what's left on the bench and who they're able to keep. Mm -hmm. Then that's different. I, but you would think they have enough high-end talent with Mitchell and Barrett and Randall, assuming he's still there. Um, if they're able to keep a guy like Grimes, I think that's when you could say, okay, maybe that's a team that could win you the, in a, a couple more wins, 45 to 48 games, maybe in that range. Maybe they're pushing into the fourth, fifth seed. Um, and trying to get into that top four of the conference, I'm not sure. I think a lot of things have to break right, but I have to see what else that roster looks like. I think a lot of that depends on that. Um, but, I, you know, either way, I think the Knicks are poised to bounce back and be a playoff team. I like the culture. Uh, I like Thibodeau and overall what he's done. I have concerns with Thibodeau and the offense. I think it needs to be get a little bit better, a little more dynamic. The offense is sometimes tough to watch. <laughs> But I think the culture of playing hard is there. This is a big year for Thibodeau because I think a lot of it is going to come down to, is he wearing these guys down? Are the players still listening to him? Have they not tuned him out, Victor? And have they still bought in? Now, I think there's a new bit of life for the team with Jalen Brunson that is going to reinvigorate them. And then you probably saw this, Victor. Some of the guys, Jalen Brunson, some of the other guys, they played at Nike Pro City here in New York. Uh, last week at a in a pro am and they were playing together. Yes. So the camaraderie seems to be there. Um, and it's funny. I could have gone to that game that night. I should have gone. But um, the camaraderie uh. seems to be there. And I think that 
I think I expect a bounce back year for the Knicks. I actually think people are sleeping on the Knicks. They're going to catch them by surprise. Would it shock me if they were like a 9-10 and gotten the playoffs too? No, it wouldn't shock me either. But I actually think they're a little bit better than that. So I'm going to say 7-8 seed. And if they get Donovan Mitchell, I think that's where you're maybe talking, oh, could they get up to a 5 seed? Yeah, I could see that. But it really depends on what else is left on the roster. Mm-hmm. So if you ask me right now, I haven't looked at what like the over-under is betting for the Knicks. But if they're around 43, 44 wins, I could take that. I think I wouldn't shock me at all. I could see that. Man, me too, man, me too. I imagine if look look like <laughs> you, yeah. look like you in the in this case, man. And uh, uh I, I want your opinion about Tom Timba. You talk né, about uh in Brazil, people so sad in the the last season with uh Tom Timba in Brazil. Uh what's your opinion about this coach? Né? Because in your in, in in one season uh the the biggest coach from the mm-hmm. league in the uh the last season uh, no, don't have a, a good uh good nah, good good work nah, in the last season what's your opinion about Tom Chimbado I think Thibodeau is a fantastic coach he actually mm-hmm. you know when he was available I mean I want I, you know I thought he'd been a great fit for the next years ago But when he was available, I think he's a great coach to turn around the culture. He clearly has. I, I like defensive first coaches. A lot of that comes mm-hmm. from the era of Knicks basketball we watched uh, with Pat Riley and Jeff Van Gundy and Tom Thibodeau, who's an assistant on that staff. Um, I like Thibodeau a lot. My Some people have had gripes with him about, oh, he doesn't play Obi enough and that sort yes. of stuff. And I, and I think it's fair. I don't like when people say he doesn't play young kids because that's really not true. You got to look at it in the year, the season before he played quickly a ton and trusted quickly and quickly got a lot of good minutes. He played Grimes last year when he had to, when he really likes Grimes. And I can, I, I can tell you, I am confident Thibodeau does not want the Knicks to give up Grimes. I can tell you that he does not want to. That is a Thibodeau player. He's a good defender. He can shoot the ball which is why I want the Knicks mm-hmm. to keep him. Um, so I don't always like when people say he doesn't play the young players because he plays he's played young players. I just think Obi Toppin is a big fan favorite, and I like Obi Toppin. He runs the floor. <laughs> he's got the highlight dunks. I love it. He Obi Toppin, Show- just happens, <laughs> yeah, Obi Toppin just happens to be behind Randall a lot. You can't – what I did like from Thibodeau was at the end of the year, he played the kids a lot. When Knicks were out of it, the kids played a lot at the end of last season. We saw them get a lot of good run. Tibbs is going to play if you play defense. He trusts quickly. He trusts Grimes. He'll play RJ, of course. He likes he likes RJ. He, so the Knicks, the Knicks, are, they've been playing the guys. If they don't trade for Mitchell, if they don't trade for Mitchell, the key is, are you going to play these guys? If Fonier doesn't have it and he looks terrible on defense because he's not good on defense, Are you going to say, hey, let's put Grimes in the shooting guard and let him have more time? Are you going to do that? If Randall doesn't have it one night, are you going to be flexible? I think it's more about flexibility to say, okay, Randall doesn't have it tonight. We're going to go with Obi. That's what I would like to see more from him is flexibility, allowing mm-hmm. somebody doesn't have it. We're going to go with this other guy. Give this other guy a chance. Can he be a spark plug? And go for that. I think there's some players, Randall, some other guys he's maybe been too loyal to. Um, mm-hmm. But I think he's going to be very keen on having his guys. I think that's number one. The other thing, my other criticism with Thibodeau, where I think he can get better, is I think he's got to get somebody on this staff that's an offensive guru. Because some of the sets the Knicks play, and they look archaic, they look old, like some sets. <laughs> and they have to be a little bit more dynamic in the offense. Now, I do think Brunson will help a lot with that. I do. I really do. I think Brunson is going to help them get into their offense earlier. You saw a lot of times when Burks was playing because he's not a point guard. They just didn't get into the offense early, and a good point guard is going to be able to do that. And I think Brunson is a good point guard, and I think that'll make a huge difference. Um, because you know, even you saw last year, the Knicks played better when Derrick Rose was on the floor because he's just a right. Player. I love Derrick Rose, man. Yes, <laughs> and obviously, you know, he's somebody who'll probably go if they get uh Donovan Mitchell. 
But you know, if you yes. got Brunson, and you got if Derrick Rose is back and healthy, the Knicks have a lot of depth if they keep the roster the same. They've got young legs. They but what what Thibodeau has to do is use those young legs to his advantage when he can. It's a long season in the regular season. Don't mm-hmm. grind and wear down your players. There's going to be times you need to lean on Grimes and Obi and quickly to give you good minutes. And look, these two, those, this is the third season for Obi and and also quickly in the second season for Grimes. And I think these guys have proven they can play in the league. You know, listen, if you give Obi time and Obi's playing well in limited minutes, even if it's 15, 18 minutes a game, there's going to come a point. If Randall doesn't play good, there's going to come a point where you're going to have to start talking about does Randall have to get out of New York and does Obi have to start? I think those things play themselves out. So that's why I say Nick fans don't worry about it. But Tom Thibodeau has to show more flexibility. It's not so mm-hmm. much to me about the minutes. It's more about the decision-making when you see somebody doesn't have it. Okay, I'm going to go with somebody else on the bench. Let's see if we can get a spark for them. You know, if if Rose is injured and Brunson doesn't have it one night, all right, let's throw Miles McBride in there and let's see what he can do. Um, you know, and, and I think it's about being flexible. I think if he's flexible and grows on that, they'll be better. But I think I, – I don't like when people criticize him saying he hasn't played young guys because he has – and he's done it a lot through his career. He played a young Derrick Rose. He played a young Jimmy Butler. He played a, a young Lou Deng when he coached in Chicago. So Tim had always played in young guys. It's just if he feels he can trust the young guys. One last mm-hmm. thing I'll say, Victor, with Obi yeah. Toppin, I think the thing about him getting on the court more is going to be defense. Thibodeau doesn't trust him defensively yet, and I think Obi's got to get better on that. And if Obi's better defensively, You'll see him on the court. I, I think he will. I think he'll start to push Randall. So I think that's what Knicks fans have to hope for. Hope that Obi gets better defensively. And if he gets better defensively, I think you'll definitely see him on the court. Uh, I, I, I ask it to you because uh, people in Brazil are so crazy with uh, Tom Chimadon. Example. Yeah. Uh, Knicks, uh, Knicks versus OKC Thunder. The, mm-hmm. the last four minutes uh, in this game, man, Alec Burks, PG, né? Uh, f- four minutes, four minutes, zero points, zero mm. points. And uh, OKC in final uh, leaves the, this, this game for overtime. Mm-hmm. I, I remember so I much of this game, man. And uh, I, <laughs> me, uh, me, Angry. <laughs> Are you angry? You angry I, about I, the offense there? <laughs> man, zero points, four <laughs> minutes, man. It's four yeah. minutes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I understand the, uh, you. You. Um, you told about uh, Tom Chimbo. I, I understand. Né? Yeah. Man, we'll see in the next season. I hope. I really, really hope. Né? Uh, Randall will be more here. For me, Randall in the, the last season, here, mentally, mentally, Randall is not a franchise player, okay? Agreed. But it's a good player. Mm-hmm. It's a good player, okay? But here in the last season, it's not okay. okay nah? But I hope Randall, good here. Nah? Uh, I believe so much in this team, man. I believe so much. And the last season, not last season. Other season four, yeah. Knicks, Knicks four, four, yeah, four seed. Yeah, uh, man. Uh, and uh, uh, with Jalen Brown, so uh, uh, Spider, uh, or not Spider, or no, or no Spider. Yeah, Knicks, Knicks, in my opinion, can be uh, uh, minimal uh, playing, right? Uh, or playoffs first round in the next this season huh? but man i i miss so much he, nick's great man nick's <laughs> contender i, I you, miss you, you so need it. much you need, you need it victor you need it at the knicks fans all over the world new york brazil they've been waiting for a while i think they just want the consistency you know we got the taste yes. of it two years ago and it <laughs> felt uh-huh. good and, and i think a lot of us a lot of people who root for the knicks knew that that team was probably played a bit over their head. Uh, listen, we were winning games with Alfred Payton. 
And I know how much you love <laughs> Alfred Payton, Victor. You're winning. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my I know. eyes, my eyes. I know. My I know. Eyes. Your eyes couldn't take it. So, you know, I think in a way, the team they have now is more talented than that team, right? Like I think we look yes. at them on paper, they're more talented. You have younger players who have more experience now. You know, I, 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 I'm a big believer that when you get young guys into the playoffs, a young team, you know, the Knicks are still a young team. It's important yes. to get that playoff experience. So any experience they can get playing meaningful games in the playoffs is huge for this team. Getting back to the playoffs is huge for this team. If you make the playoffs two out of three years from where this franchise has been, that is huge. There are building blocks, there's foundations, no matter what they do, whether they get Donovan Mitchell or not. It's just huge for them to get back to the playoffs and establish that winning culture and identity um, that are, that's going to be attractive to players in the future. You know, a lot, a lot, you talked about this, Victor. A lot of young people have no recollection of the Knicks ever being a consistently good team. You know, we do, but the 90s are a long time ago now, and we're mm -hmm. getting old. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young people have no idea of the Knicks ever being good. So you have to build that and get that culture of, the Knicks being good again. And that's stuff that takes time, but it's one step at a time, one season's at a time, smart signings, transactions. You got to build. Yep, bit by bit, you got to build. And I I actually, I just think if you're a fan of the Knicks and you've looked at what this team has done in the last three to four years, I don't think you can really be that upset. I would ask somebody, to, what's the move that they made that you really didn't like? Maybe you didn't like them re-signing Julius. Maybe you thought they should have traded him, and that's fine. Maybe you didn't like them signing Fournier and Kemba. And even then, even those moves, I would say to somebody, well, Kemba didn't work out, and the Knicks moved on from him, right? They, they moved off of him. They, they, they didn't have him around. It didn't work out. It wouldn't shock me if they do the same with Fournier. But – yes. I think the organization overall has made pretty competent moves. And I think that's a huge difference from what Knicks fans have seen probably over the last 20 to 25 years. So baby steps, baby steps, man. It's all good. Uh, it's complicated, Dexter. The patience, the patience from Nick fans. It's, Not a lot of patience. It's complicated. Oh, man, it's complicated. Oh, the yeah. last question, man. The last yes. question. Um, in your opinion, uh, I want to talk with you about RJ Barrett. In your mm -hmm. opinion, RJ Barrett uh, can be uh, all star or not? In your opinion? Oh, I def. Oh, I definitely think he can be all star. Definitely. Um, how many times he can be that? I don't know. I thought last year his outside shooting dipped a little bit uh, from the previous year. But I think you really have to look at a lot of how he played in from about end of January on. He played very good. He was attacking the rim. He was getting to the line more. His free throw percentage has gone up the last couple of years. I think the next evolution of his game is how he's creating off the dribble and what how he changes his variety of shots. Can he get into the mid-range and score a little bit more. The three-point shots look better. He's taking more. I know it dipped off a little bit last year, but I, I, I'm still encouraged with the volume he was shooting it and this kind of shots he was taking. Now if he can develop a little more in the mid-range, and he still needs to be a little bit better of a finisher. I still think there's a lot of times he attacks and he doesn't finish great. Um, Pretty strong. Strong. <laughs> and I think that's something. See, that's something you can work on upper body strength as you work on working with his trainer in the off season, you know, finishing. I, I RJ Barrett, I have the sense that he's somebody who wants to be great. And I think everything with him has been upward. It's been slow and steady. It's been not the way I think some Knicks fans wanted to see him make a leap in year two and become a superstar. I don't know if he'll ever be a superstar, but I, you know, could I see RJ Barrett being a multiple time all-star? Yeah, I could see it. He's got the tools. He's got the size. He defends well already. He's already a plus defender. Um, he's not a great defender, but he's an above average defender at his size. He rebounds the ball pretty well for his position. Uh, I like to see the playmaking become a little better, the finishing a little bit better, like I said. I loved what he did. The biggest thing for me last year was that he was attacking more and getting to the line. That was the biggest thing, and that's why he became – Aggressive. Yep, aggressive. And that's why he became a 20-point-per-game scorer last year. 
now it's that can you build on that? Can you add more versatility to your game? And I think that's the next leap for him being an all-star. If he's playing well next season, and I'm talking about where we're very impressed, and he's averaging over 21 points or something, and the Knicks are have a pretty good record, oh, he'll have a great shot to make the all-star team. Donovan Mitchell or no Donovan Mitchell. And I just think it's about where he goes in year four uh, for R.J. Barrett. We'll see where he goes. But, yeah, I definitely think he could be an all-star. I think he has the tools to do it. It's just about putting it together and fine-tuning some parts of his game. He has the tools to do it, for sure. Ah, great. Uh, before yeah. the end of this interview, I, I want to comment with you. Uh, this channel, Nick Fans Brazil, uh, won't make a trip from New York uh, in the future. And uh, I hope to uh, meet you in New York. Uh, oh, man. We'll, we'll be a... Victor, anytime, if you come to New York, you let me know. Uh, we'll link up. New York has a large Brazilian population. There's a lot of Brazilians <laughs> here. Um, there's good Brazilian food in New York. And if I ever come to Brazil, which I've never been to Brazil, I have to come to Brazil, man. I have to. I've been <laughs> wanting to go to Rio for years. I, I've been wanting to do it. Anybody I've ever met from Brazil, lovely, lovely <laughs> people, man, just lovely people. Um, I haven't been to South America, even though my family is from an island in the Caribbean that's very close to South America, Grenada. Oh, so I've never been to South America, but um, I, I want to... I want to go and I definitely want to visit Brazil. I want to see the Knicks fans in Brazil too. So when I come to South America, you might see me, you might see me with the Knicks hat on. You might see that. <laughs> uh, come to São Paulo, okay? São Paulo, I, I, okay, I, yeah. I, I, I live in São Paulo. São Paulo, it's like the same in New York. It's a giant city. Yeah. Uh, more more than 10 millions, 10 millions. Uh, yeah, okay. I can see. I got in, see. In I got see. I want to go see. Everybody says to go to Rio, but I go to I got to visit São Paulo. Rio, too. the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I, but I need to go to Sao Paulo too. I need to go. I need to do that. That's it's got, we'll, we'll make it happen. We gotta make it happen, Victor, for sure. Definitely. And my daughter, my daughter, uh, you know, you know, your daughter, my yeah. daughter, Isa, uh, Isabel, uh, my daughter, loves the Knicks, man. Loves the Knicks. I, lo I love uh, that she uh, loves the Knicks. I love, it. <laughs> I love it. I told, I told you, man. My wife, it's a Bull fan. Bull fan, uh, yeah. In the last days, uh, I, I I joking with Isabel. Uh, I talk with her, and uh, I said, Isabel, uh, I I will take uh, jersey from from my wife, and I will take Ella uh, and Isabel. No, like, no, 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 Dad, you can't do that. Just the Knicks. Just there the you Knicks. go. There we go, Isabel. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you, you're, Victor, you're doing a great job. You are raising her right. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. Man, I, I, I love you. your yeah, uh, this interview with you, ah. bro. I, I no, love man, it. I that... hope I hope you enjoy you enjoying it too. Oh man. yeah, oh yeah. I I would like to let all the viewers, listeners know I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I thank Victor for having me on. Victor reached out to me on Twitter and asked me to come on, and I said, of course, man. Like, <laughs> look, I love talking basketball. And when I get to talk Knicks basketball, oh, it's even better. So I'm honored you reached out. To have me on and i would come back again anytime man you 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 let me know and we'll we'll do it again we'll definitely do this again sure oh man so so great honor great great honor receive you in this channel man great great honor and uh i hope to see you in soon in this channel bro you, uh, will. you can you, you can share okay <laughs> <You> <laughs> take will. care bro and we'll soon bro all right, okay. man. Take, take care. Let's go, Knicks. Okay. All right. Let's go, Knicks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. Peace. E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal? Você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever. Se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? 
Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick.